Welcome back to the Crochet Chronicles, so my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're gonna do the character sweaters. These are both the exact same sweater. They're just colored differently and the cat has some ears. I'll do the cat ears at the end of this tutorial uh, but both of the sweaters are the same. And we're gonna be using two size crochet hooks today. A three and a half millimeter size E Okay, or we're gonna use a G or four millimeter. So you'll need two different sizes today. You can do buttons for eyes but if you're not uh, comfortable with buttons you can also just crochet some circles and put those on as well and uh, it's really quite easy. So it's available for six months, 12 months, 18, 24. Let's tell you a little bit about that. When it comes to reading this pattern you're going to notice that there's four different sizes that are indicated in the instructions. So the smallest is there, six months, 12 and then we have 18 and then 24. So whenever there's a decision to be made there will always be that information. So it says chain 56, 60, 64, 68. Choose the size that you're gonna work with and then commit. Now Yarnspirations does a great job in color coding. So when you see it again it says one double crochet in each of the next seven, eight, nine, or 10 and then what you have to just do is just decide the size that you're working on and that's the set of instruction. So all throughout the pattern you'll be able to find that. So I'm gonna be doing the six month with you on camera today but just just substitute that information uh, when we go through this as well and it's really quite nicely. Just a couple uh, notes that I see. The foundation chain needs to be uh, pulled over the child's head so join with the first uh, one just to make sure that there's no twist and I'll show you a secret on doing that as well. So today we're going to be using Bernat Softy Baby Yarn. Let me show you that. So today's yarn of choice is the Bernat Softy Baby Yarn and when you turn it over it's a light three and that's why we're using a smaller crochet hook in order to play with this yarn today. So on page number three there's a diagram of the sweater. So we're going to work our way in the neck and then move our way down and we're gonna get to a certain spot and then we're gonna be jumping over stitches to create these uh, armholes for these to be going in after. So we essentially are crocheting from the top all the way to the bottom and then we're gonna go back later and finish off the sleeves. So the way that this item is crocheted and folded it actually automatically creates the sleeves just like you see here. So you can see that we're just going to round in a circle and as soon as we get to the sleeves we stop that, we create that hole and then we just continue around the base. So you can change the color as often or as little as you wish and today I'm just gonna keep it nice and simple. You can also notice that the sweaters have ears just like you see here. So it's really quite perfect and I'll show you how to do those at the end of the tutorial depending on which one you wanna do or if you wanna do it at all. That's up to you. So let's get started with your starting chain. Let's create a slip knot. I am doing the six month size as I mentioned. So if you are doing the bigger sizes just substitute the information that you'll find in the pattern. The link has, is in the more uh, information of this video. So I wanna chain 56. So just chain. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 and here's my little secret for you. Once you get your 10 just take it off the hook and go into the very first chain that you started with and insert in and then keep on going. So let's just do another 10. So this is gonna be 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20 and go all the way to 56 and by doing this what it's doing is it's helping it not to twist the chain. So please go all the way to 56 for me now. Now that I've done my chain of 56 all I just need to do is just yarning over pull through and through and because I left it on the hook this chain is not twisted so that I can start the top of my, my head. So let me get started on round number one and we need to count this out slowly and create the bends that help make the sweater amazing. So let's begin round number one. We're gonna go nice and slowly here for the smaller size. So we're gonna just chain up three which counts as a double crochet and we're gonna advance to the next stitch. Now I'd recommend going into the back loop of the chain. It just is a, a nicer finish than for the top of the neck and I want you to double crochet in the next seven. So include this next one. So we're gonna say this is one and then just go to the next one. So two, and this is three, we have four, This is six and seven. Once you have your seven in there then you're going to do one double crochet, chain one, one double crochet in the next one. So go to the next uh, chain. So it's one double crochet, chain one and one double crochet. 
So now what we're going to do is in the next uh, 10 chains we're just gonna do one double crochet each. So let's count that out together. So we have one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Once you get your ten in there, then the next uh, what we have to do is we have to V-stitch in the next one. So let's do that. So we're gonna double crochet, chain one and double crochet in the same one. So the next 16 in a row are each gonna be a double crochet. So let's do that. Let's count these out. So we have one, two, this is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, this is fifteen, and sixteen and I just wanna verify that one more time. So I'm just gonna recount from the V-stitch, you don't include the V-stitch. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So now that my 16 is in, I wanna do a V-stitch in the next. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So the next 10 are gonna be double crochet. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, this is seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then we're gonna V-stitch then uh, in the next one. So it's a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then it says to do one double crochet in the last eight stitches. So in the last eight, you, you can count it out but the chain is almost done. So let's just count it out and let's see if we have to fake it or make it. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four, this is five, six, seven, and eight. So I got two stitches left and if it happens to do this for you and I'm confident with my numbers what you can just do sometimes this happens is that sometimes your your chain when you go to loop over looks like it's a double. So just uh, go and put two double crochets together to finish that off and then just join it to the top. So to make sure that when you go to join it to the top that it's not twisting at all and this is just an easy way to be able to fake it. Like really um, if you have opportunities to fake it why wouldn't you right? So let's just follow the top around and once you are confirmed with that then just join it to the top of the first one to go like that. Okay so let's begin to do round number two all the way through nine. 
rounds two to nine are the exact same thing. So you're just gonna chain up one, two and three. So chain up three and you're gonna move to the next double crochet. So whenever there's a V stitch I want you to go right in the middle of the V stitch and put another V stitch in there and that's gonna be the growth to make this thing grow bigger. So just go to the next double crochet and double crochet in and you're just gonna continue to move around and where there's a V stitch you're going to add a V stitch. And this is the top of the baby sweater. So this is what's gonna make it grow up over the shoulders of the baby that will be wearing it. So you go into every double crochet there possibly is. Okay, so the, I can see the V stitch is right here. So I, I got one more before the V stitch. Okay, so this one is in this part of the V stitch. So add another V stitch in. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet right into the V stitch itself. You notice I'm not counting, I'm just looking for the V stitches and then move along. So then you just come into the one right after it. Put another double crochet in. And so all you're just doing is you're looking for the V stitches to add more V stitches to. So I like these baby sweaters when they're done from the, the top going down because they're really quite straightforward in order to follow. So all I'm doing is looking for another V stitch and it becomes more obvious as this thing gets bigger too that you'll see the bend more and more and so you won't be afraid to be skipping over it if you accidentally do. Okay, so I'm not gonna take you through rows two through nine all the way by itself. So here's another V stitch. So V right in the middle, double crochet, chain one, double crochet and then just keep on moving. So you're gonna do that every time you hit a V stitch you'll add uh, a V stitch in and then when you get back to the other side here just uh, slip stitch to the top of the first chain three and then begin again and when you hit V stitches just add more V stitches. So just write down the numbers two all the way through nine and then just check those off every time you complete a round and then we're gonna get started after that. So please do that now and I'll see you at that moment. So I now have my nine rounds completed all the way from the start. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this is what it looks like right now. You really can't see the sleeves yet because the sleeves are not been put in yet. So what we want to do as we move on after you have this done is that we want to create these. See, you're on the outside now. You're on the very back. You're gonna get the first point here, the first V-stitch and the next V-stitch to join together and we're going to be putting those together and this is now your new arm sleeve right here and then you're gonna go across the front and then you're gonna do the same with the other one and again it's just the opposite. You're gonna be able to put them together and therefore that's what it will kinda look like. And so right where these lines go down is where the sleeves are going to be on both sides. So if you actually fold it in a certain way you can actually see it before it's even done. So let's uh, get started and let's show you how to do this next. So let's start the next round. Uh, we've already done nine rounds so we're gonna chain up three as we normally did before and what we want to do is we want to double crochet ourselves all the way to the first V stitch. You don't need to see me to do that because you know what to do at this point but right when you hit the first one I'll meet you back here in just a moment and I'll show you what to do. So we're now approaching the first V stitch and this would be the next one. Now technically we would be doing V stitches if we were growing this bigger but we're not and so we're going to double crochet into that chain one space and I need you to chain three. So one, two, three and I need you to come back over here and just follow it along and just get to the next V stitch and I want you to double crochet in the next V stitch. So just kind of fold it so it's in front of you like so and by doing this you're eliminating all that stitch work that you would normally have to go all the way around. So this is what it would look like at this point. Okay, so therefore there is one of your sleeves. So you're now going to continue to double crochet yourself all the way to the next time you hit the V stitch again and I'll see you there in just a moment. So now coming up to the next V stitch that is along here and we're gonna be doing the exact same thing we just did. So here's the stitch right before the V stitch and so inside the V stitch inside the chain one you're going to double crochet, chain three and then just move to the next V stitch and just fold it and double crochet. So you're just kind of like folding it but you're not, you're just leaving it open like that. And there's your next sleeve and so now you're gonna come around the back 
of this the way that you had before. So now that you've done this, remember how you've been going all the way around and up and over top of the shoulders. Now we're just gonna go around the body itself. So you can see there's less distance going all the way around now because you've just eliminated all the sleeve parts and we have to do the sleeves after. So please continue all the way to the um, end of this and slip stitch it and then meet me back there in just a moment. So I'm just at the very end and I'm just going to slip stitch it and go around again. So we're gonna keep this color one more time. We're gonna chain up three and then one double crochet in each of the stitches. Now when you get to the chain three, you're just gonna go all the way around and you're gonna follow the chain three. Go one into each one of the three chains. Don't go around the, the whole chain. Just go right into the actual chain itself. So one, two and three and then just continue and go into the chain over here and then meet me back here. So just go all the way around and just one double crochet in each of the double crochets and or the chain work that is in there. So I'll see you at the end of this round. So now coming to the end and I'm just gonna slip stitch it. Now we're gonna get rid of this color just for a few rounds and the best way to get rid of this color is just trim this yarn, trim it long enough so you can put it into a darning needle and just pull up on this strand. Grab a darning needle because the child's gonna be wearing it you wanna make sure you take care of your loose ends. And if you put it inside your work, so just going inside and then just flip it so that you can see the back of it. So just going up underneath the stitches. Okay and I'm gonna flip it around. So this is the inside of it. And I just pulled it and then I'm gonna go back in the other direction through a slightly different path. So that was two and going back in the other direction for three. So noticing that I'm staying on this side of the project like the inside. So now you can trim it. Now you've gone back and forth three times. So right where we're going to do the join again, we what we want to do is that we want to bring on our next color and we're going to continue that for a few rounds. So let's bring on our next color. It's going to be blue in my case and I'm going to attach it to the very first one and I'm going to pull it through. So we're going to change up the story a little bit. Okay, so we're going to just pull it through and then I'll tell you what to do. Okay, so now that that color's in, we're going to chain two and that's gonna count as a half double crochet, so chain two. And then in the next one, I want you to half double crochet and I want you to half double crochet in each of the stitches going all the way around. So you're going to use this color for a set amount of inches. So in this, for this size, it's two and a half inches. And what I want you to do is that after you get that two and a half inches done, I want you to make a note on how many rounds that was because on the sleeves you wanna match that as well so that they're at the right amount as well. So once you do the first one at two and a half inches, just use that and count how many rounds it was and we're gonna mimic that effort on the sleeves itself. So what I want you to do is just continue to round and half double crochet and when you get back to the start, just slip stitch it to the top chain up two and then half double crochet and do that for two and a half inches and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm just finishing up and this is two and a half inches and I'm just gonna slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain two and then that's it for this color. So I'm going to get rid of this color and I'm gonna do exactly what I did before where I'm gonna take my strand and I'm going to weave it in and out three times in order to hide it the best. We're then going to join the gray back on and we're gonna return back to double crochet. So it, it seems like it got smaller here just for this area here as far as stitch work and this is where the character will appear. So you're looking at the back of it right now and I just wanna turn it so I can see the back. Keep the stitch work that you're doing right now. Keep it on the back side so in the inside of the, of the sweater go back and forth three times. As soon as you're done that we're gonna bring back our gray and let's do that. So let's get our gray back up and attach it where we had just finished off. So insert your hook in. Create a slip knot with the gray and let's rejoin this back on. Just pull through. Gonna retry that real quick. So just make a slip knot and just insert that in. There we go. And now we're going to just chain up three again. So one, two, three, it's already what you know and it's gonna be one double crochet in each 
of the stitches going all the way back around. And so what you wanna do is you wanna continue that and so this distance here measures four inches, sorry four and a half inches for uh, my size here and you're going to, so what you're looking at the doing is creating this to be four and a half inches just like you see here. So right now we know this is two and a half so we got a little bit. So I want you to double crochet continually around and when you get back around each one just slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain three and then just chain up three and then double crochet around. So I'll meet you at the end of that. So get your four and a half inches done now and I'll see you here and then we'll start the ribbing at the bottom of the sweater. So let's show you that again. We're gonna chain up two to begin and we're gonna do a back post double crochet around the next one. So just wrap the hook coming in through the back side, pop it right back out to the back and double crochet as normal. The next one will be a front post double crochet. So just wrap the hook coming in to the front side and out the other side and double crochet as normal. So the next one's a back post. So coming out from the back, pop it out to the back and double crochet and the next one's a front. So you're just gonna keep doing this all the way around and when you get all the way around you're just gonna join it and the nice thing this is about the ribbing so it's gonna really be easy to maintain once you get this round done. So it's uh, back post, front post, back post, front post all the way around. Let's see at the end of this round. So once you get all the way around you're just going to slip stitch so this is the back post double crochet that it, you ended up with and then you're just gonna slip stitch to the beginning chain two. You're going to slip stitch up again, sorry, you're gonna chain two up again and now you're just gonna maintain exactly what you see for four more rounds. So if it's in the back post, keep it in the back post which happens to be the way that we're starting. We're starting with the back post and you can see that this one is a front post here just the way you're looking at it. So keep that as a front post double crochet and that's gonna keep these ribbing uh, traveling up on the inside and the outside. So back post double crochet, front post double crochet. So you don't have to uh, change anything that you see. Just keep maintaining what you see and do this for uh, four rounds which includes this one. When you get all the way back around just chain two or just join it to the top of the chain two and then that's it. So I'll see you at the end of this and then we're gonna move on to our sleeves next. So moving on after you have the ribbing done here at the base, I've already done one sleeve just to verify the pattern is correct and it's really quite a simple uh, arm. Let me tell you a little bit about this and then we're gonna dive in and do the other side. So the same instructions applies to both arms. So after working with the arm, there's some great tips that we're gonna have. You're going to notice that the colors are pretty much changing at the same spot. So we're, we're gonna start with our gray and then we're going to make sure that we get that started properly. The biggest thing about baby sweaters or anything when it comes to sleeves is making sure that your count is right the first time. If your count is off even by one, it'll make the other sleeve look like that it's out of balance. And so I've done that with baby sweaters way right back in the beginning when I started crocheting these sweaters and then I would just be off by one stitch because I would be too lazy to count but if you don't count then you can end up with a sleeve that's a different size. So once we get that done this here it's going to say do this amount of instruction for the same amount of distance that's here. So what I did is that I went back to here and I counted that there was six half double crochet rounds here. So I put six here. So I didn't even use my measuring tape. I just matched it because that's what the size was because the same distance was applying. And then we're going to do this. So right here at the very end. So you're going to notice that it is going to be the same distance right below the blue here. So that's pretty consistent. The only thing that's different about the end of the sleeve versus this is that we are going to reduce by one stitch before we really start this ribbing and the ribbing distance is exactly the same distance as well. So it's really quite an easy pattern to be able to maintain and I actually really like it. Let me show you what the back looks like with the slip stitching. Um, you will always get slip stitching when it comes to these kind of patterns. So you can see that it did follow it up but on the arm the slip stitching is right inside the actual arm itself so it's pretty much invisible. So after working with the arm there's some great tips that we're gonna have. You're going to notice that the colors are pretty much changing at the same spot. So we're, we're gonna start with our gray and then we're going to make sure that we get that started properly. The biggest thing about baby sweaters or anything when it comes to sleeves is making sure that your count is right the first time. If your count is off even by one it'll make the other sleeve look like that it's out of balance. And so I've done that with baby sweaters way right back in the beginning when I started crocheting these sweaters and then I would just be off by one stitch because I be too lazy to count but if you don't count then you can end up with a sleeve that's a different size. So once we get that done this here it's going to say do this amount of instruction for the same amount of distance that's here. So what I did is that I went back to here and I counted that there was six 
half double crochet rounds here. So I put six here. So I didn't even use my measuring tape. I just matched it because that's what the size was because the same distance was applying. And then we're going to do this. So right here at the very end. So you're going to notice that it is going to be the same distance right below the blue here. So that's pretty consistent. The only thing that's different about the end of the sleeve versus this is that we are going to reduce by one stitch before we really start this ribbing and the ribbing distance is exactly the same distance as well. So it's really quite an easy pattern to be able to maintain and I actually really like it. Let me show you what the back looks like with the slip stitching. Um, you will always get slip stitching when it comes to these kind of patterns. So you can see that I did follow it up. But on the arm, the slip stitching is right inside the actual arm itself. So it's pretty much invisible. So we're about to start the sweater and when I go to do it, I wanna grab the arm and look at it from this point of view. Okay, so look at it from this point of view and go around. If you go the other way, like so, what's gonna happen is that you're going to put the right side on the inside of the sweater. So make sure that when you're going to do it, just look at the sweater from the outside perspective and just grab the arm hole and we're going to get started right in the middle stitch of the three. So let's begin to do that next. So let's get you started right on the arm and we're going to grab our yarn and our hook. So remember that if for this size there was three stitches right in the middle. Remember when we chain three? So we're gonna go for the middle one of the three and you're going to attach your yarn. So just attach it and then chain three. So one, two, three. So you're going to go to the next one. Remember this is the middle one of three so we're gonna go to the next one and we're going to double crochet. And then we immediately jump to this section right here. So skip over the side post that you see there and go right for the first one. So we're looking for the number 31. So I have two here. So go right to the first stitch right where I'm pinching and that will be number three. I'm just counting the stitches. If this gap bothers you because it will settle down, you can always just take this yarn strand and just kind of like sew it so it gets a little bit uh, tighter but again that's up to you. So that was three and let's continue along. So we're gonna go four. So it's one double crochet in each. This is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This is thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, coming up near the end, that was 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and the very last one, see that was the very last stitch of that going up over the top. So the very last one is the other one of the set of three that before you started. Okay, so let's just get that one there. So we're just gonna go double crochet in the one right before it. So that was your 31th right there. Again, if that space bothers you, it will settle down but uh, you can always just take um, and the same color and just use your whip stitching to be able to bring that together. So just join it to the top of the first chain three that you started with and I would verify and recount this to make sure that it's 31. I'll leave that in your hands and I'll get started in the next one but I am gonna double check for myself. So off camera I had verified there was actually 31. I did count it live with you but I did wanna make sure. So I'm going to tuck in this loose end and let's begin the next round. So the next round is the last and we're gonna use gray for a bit. So we're gonna chain up three and then it's just gonna be one double crochet in each going all the way around and then you'll slip stitch it to the top of the beginning chain three when you get all the way around. So I'll meet you at the end of this round. One double crochet in each and then we're gonna fasten this color off. Get our blue back up and we're gonna begin to do that next. So I'm coming all the way back around going into my very last stitch before the chain three. I'm going to attach to the chain three and then I'm going to get rid of this color. So I'm just gonna slip stitch and then cut this yarn and I'm gonna bring back blue. 
Um, just for safety precaution because it is a child I'd recommend that anytime there's a loose end on this particular project and even any baby project in particular use a darning needle and really get rid of it. Some, you know it's nice and easy to, and almost lazy to be able to weave it in but if you use a darning needle and come into it back and forth three times you don't ever have to worry about it. Nothing's worse than you know you gift something and then you see the child with tails hanging out at the end because you guys are crocheter are going to see that before you really see anything else. So going in once, going in twice, I sound like an auctioneer with my darning needle and going back a third time and therefore it's gone. So we're gonna bring back our blue and do our blue like we did before but just in the sleeve instead. So we're bringing back our blue. I'm gonna create a slip knot to begin and I'm gonna say the same distance. So there's six rounds here. So there's gonna be six on this one. It's the same amount of dimensions. It was two and a half inches and I determined that six was two and a half here. So it's gonna be the same obviously on the sleeve. So using your blue you're going to just attach and then chain two which counts as your first half double crochet and then you're going to half double crochet into each one of the stitches going all the way around. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to do that but I'm going to meet you at the end of this round because I really wanna show you that um, when you go to start a half double crochet round the next time make sure and ensure you don't accidentally skip over a stitch and there's a reason why I'm gonna show you that. So I'll see you there in just a moment. So I'm coming up all the way around and I wanna make sure that you're not accidentally skipping any stitches. So I'm in my very last stitch. See how this one here matches to this one? So you're in your last stitch and you're going to join with your top of your first chain two. You're going to chain two and this is where people go wrong. So what happens is that you don't really see the stitch work in this first one as clearly as you do in the second. So what you have to just do is that when you go to do the first one you just have to wiggle your way and find that separation. So you see that there is a strand just in the midway point. You have to look for that here. It's just not very obvious. So you're just gonna wiggle your way and find it. See, now you can see it. So then you're just gonna half double crochet. So that's where people go wrong and they start skipping over stitches. So just one half double crochet in each going all the way around. Join it to the beginning of the chop of the chain two and I want you to do it for the set amount of dimensions that's in your pattern. For me it's gonna be six rounds and I will meet you at the end of those six rounds. Okay so now my six rounds are done. I've already fastened off with my darning needle and I'm ready now for gray. So gray is going to be another two rounds then for the size that we have in it and it says that you have to get a certain amount of dimensions and two just happens to be what it is. So what I want you to do is just attach your gray and we're gonna do two rounds of gray. No big deal and we're just going to attach to the beginning. Chain three. One two, three counts as your first double crochet and you're gonna double crochet around this round and you're gonna double crochet one more round. So please do two rounds of double crochet and then we're going to do one small decrease after that and then we're gonna start our ribbing of our sleeves. So two rounds of double crochet right now. So coming all the way back around I've just now finished two rounds of straight double crochet in the gray. The next round we're going to do one decrease and it's just really quite easy. So chain up three counts as a double crochet and I want you to double crochet in the next 15. So I'm gonna count those out with you. So let's start that. So we're gonna go one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve, thirteen, 14 and 15. So now you have 15 in. So the next two are gonna be come together to two together. Double crochet. So wrap the hook going into the next one. Pull through and pull through two and hold. Do not finish it. Wrap the hook going into the next one after that. Pull through, pull through two and hold. You have three loops on the hook. Pull through all three. So you've just made two together on this particular one right here. So now we're going to just double crochet yourself all the way back to the very beginning and then join to the beginning of the top of chain three. So uh, do that and I'll see you there in just a moment. 
So I'm coming up to the beginning again just slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain three. So now this round plus the next four rounds are going to all be the same. So you're going to chain up two and you're going to treat the next one as a back post double crochet. So wrap the hook coming through the back side, come to the front and then pop it back out. So grab, so just go around that post and then just double crochet this. So that's exactly what you did in the ribbing over here. So then the next one is in the front post. So wrap the hook coming into the side of the front post, pull through, pull through two and two. So wrap and you wanna keep doing that all the way around. Okay, so it's just every other one. So it's front post and then back post and etc. I'll meet you at the end of this round. I just wanna point out something really quickly. I'm still on that last round I was gonna leave you on. You gotta watch that one that is to two together and treat it as a two together. Don't accidentally separate those back out. So I'm just going in and here it is here. Okay, so you can see that they have the same top. Those two belong together. So those are gonna go in the one side and out the other and then just front post double crochet. Okay, so don't separate those by accident. Just keep on going and treat them as if they're one because they are one. Okay, I'll see you at the end of this round. So then coming up all the way back around the last one will be a back post double crochet and you're going to slip stitch it to the top of the first chain two. Okay, so now you're going to begin the next four rounds exactly what you already see. So you're gonna chain up two. You can see it's already in behind. It's the back post so you're gonna keep that as a back post double crochet. And then the next one you can see it's in the front so you'll make that front post and that'll continue the ribbing up. So you're gonna do this round plus three more. So a total of four rounds just like this and that's it for the end of the sleeve. So please do that and I'll see you at the end of the sleeve and then we're gonna start working on the upper trim in order to do the collar area and then we're gonna get to the fun stuff with the kitty and the bare ears. Okay, so let's move on. We got our sleeves done and these are awesome, pretty darn cute. I'm going to show you how to close off this hole. So if this is really bothering you, it kind of bugs me a little bit. It's part of the nature of actually um, sweater building. You do get that. So let me show you how to fix that because I know some of you might ask me that as well. And so here's how I'll do it. First thing I would do to fix it is just turn it to the inside of this. So let's turn it inside out. Okay, and you can really see it on the other side when you go to do this. So we're gonna turn it inside out and we're gonna do both of the sleeves this way. So I'll show you how I'm gonna do it. So you can see that the, the holes are kind of pretty substantial. So what you wanna just do is grab an extra piece of spare yarn and you're going to create a slip knot on the one side and you're going to feed the other through a darning needle. So you're gonna feed it to a darning needle and you're gonna stay on the inside of this project. So just going in Okay, just isolating what you want to close and just zap in, in and then go straight across and when this comes back around you wanna put the, the loop through the loop and that'll lock it into position. Okay, so now what you're just gonna do is just whip stitch, just move up a little bit and then whip stitch to the other side. Okay, and then whip stitch one more time. So just give it three stitches. Once you're satisfied with that, you can see it's completely closed and uh, that's it. So what I'm gonna do, just do is just weave it in and out that magical three times. So one and if you wanna put a tie in it, you can I guess. Two and three. Okay, so you can see it just completely closed off. And then take the other starting one that you had and hopefully you've left yourself enough distance. Myself it's a little bit short. You know hindsight is always 20-20 right? So then you just wanna take that starting one and just weave it through as well. One and because it's already a knot I'm just gonna go twice and two and then just cut it. So I'm gonna do the other side as well and let's take a look at what it looks like now on the other side. See, completely gone. So that would be how you could close that off and uh, so instead of a big gap that you might have like on the other side, you'll have it nice and closed just like you see it. So do it the other side if you wish. Again, that's optional, it's up to you.
And just one more thing before I move on from this. So there was a gap right in the very uh, beginning here and remember that you chain three and you put those three double crochet. You may see a gap on the other side here that you may need to close. So in my case I sewed this side and this side and this side and this side in order to have that completely closed. Again that's up to you. So let's turn this over and we're going to go for the back and we're going to start doing the upper collar now. So let's create a slip knot and let's begin. We're gonna do two rounds of single crochet just really quite easily. Just attach where you can see the other line and uh, you're just going to join it. Chain one and single crochet and you're going to single crochet in each one of the stitches going all the way around. The nice thing about this when you do collars and stuff it's the final touches so you're not too worried about the, the um, stitch counts or anything like that. So just do one single crochet in each and then when you get back around just join to the top of the first single crochet, chain up one and then single crochet around again one more time. So do two rounds of single crochet. I'll see you at the end of that. So my upper collar is now done two rounds of single crochet. It looks pretty good. So if you don't wanna put any eyes or anything on there the sweater is good to go and you're done. If you wanted to make this short sleeve you could have stopped at the blue area here and just had a little short sleeve sweater or like short sleeve uh, idea as well. So let me just cover on how to make the kitty ears and the bear ears and then you can sew them onto the section. If you're not comfortable with using buttons just do uh, a, a crochet circle. So just chain two and then put six single crochet um, uh, right in the second chain from the hook and then just join it and then you'll have a nice circle and you can use those instead and sew those on if you're feeling more comfortable with that. So let's move on to doing the kitty ears next. So let's move along to doing the kitty ears. You need a three and a half millimeter size E crochet hook in order to play and you're gonna use the same color that you did the striping with on your sweater. I'm going to start off with the slip knot and what I want you to do is that I want you to chain a total of eight. So let's do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. Once you have that done we're gonna do to row number one. So we're gonna go second chain from the hook. So just count it back. So one and two. Get the back loop only. Just makes a nicer finish and you're going to single your single crochet yourself across. So clearly we're at the very base of the, the kitty cat ears. So we're just single crocheting across the the chain. So the smaller hooks uh, makes it look more applique based. Okay so you're going right to the very end and then you're going to turn your work and then do row number two. Row number two it's exactly what you just saw. So it's just chain up one and single crochet into each. So so you can see I'm not really counting. I'm just following what's already there. So one single crochet in each. So you need to do a total of two cat ears obviously. <laughs> Unless you have a one eared cat at home which is quite possible. Riverstone kinda got in a fight just before we moved out here to Nova Scotia. So she kinda has damage in her one ear. Took her to the vet but it is what it is. <laughs> she needs to learn to play nicely with other kitties. We're gonna turn our work and now we're going to chain up one and we're gonna put the first two together. So chain up one. So we're gonna put the first two. So going into the first one pull through and keep it on the hook. Going into the next one pull through, keep it on the hook and then pull through all three loops. And then what you're going to do is you're gonna work your way across. And the very last two you are going to put those two together. So here's your last two. So going in, pull through, going into the last one, pull through, pull through all three loops and that was row number three. So let's turn our work and we're going to chain up one and we're gonna single crochet the first two together. So pull through, pull through, we're gonna single crochet the next one and the very final two are gonna come together Okay, so the next two are the final two. So put those together, turn a work and we're going to then chain up one and we're gonna put the final three stitches together. So just going in, pull through, pull through and pull through. You'll have four loops on the hook. That's it. So that is your kitty ear right here. So you're gonna take this yarn and you're going to then fasten it off with your darning needle to make a nice finish and then you are going to take this once you get both of them done and just right here 
just whip stitch it right into position right on top of the blue. And what I would do is probably fasten this down also to the back of the sweater a little bit. You could have it so it folds up a little bit but um, I would keep it a little bit fastened down so it's not a safety hazard as well. Again you can make a choice that is right for your your particular gift. So just uh, remember what we talked about with uh, just getting rid of yarn tails just back and forth the total three times. So just pull everything and go back. So one, just don't lose your point and two and three. So that's how you do your kitty ears. You're gonna do two and then sew them to your project. Now the um, nose itself is embroidered on so just look at the nose if you wish or if you wanna leave it off that's completely up to you as well. And then you're just gonna get rid of this tail and then just uh, with the same yarn color just sew it down to your project that you have. So that's how you do your kitty ear. So let's move along to how to do your bear ears. Okay for the bear ears you wanna use the same color as the stripe again like we did with the kitty. And we are going to then just create a slip knot and chain a total of four. So one, two, three, and four. So now we're going to put seven double crochets in the fourth chain from the hook. So all the way back at the beginning you wanna do seven double crochets. So you're gonna go one, two, three, So it's four, five, six. So you see you're going in a half moon and seven. Once you get that done, you're almost done. You're gonna turn your work and you're gonna chain two which counts as a double crochet and you are gonna put uh, the half double crochet in the same one that you just did that one out of and then you are going to put two half double crochets into each one of the rest of the stitches going all the way across including the last one and that is the top of your your bare ears. So then the bare ears just get sewn down to the top of the sweater. If you wanna just have them lift off a little bit that's up to you. We leave that creativity up to you. You know what is best for you and for your needs. Again with the eyes you can just crochet yourself a circle or just sew on buttons if you're uh, feeling comfortable with that. Um, whenever I do buttons on a project people always leave comments that you should never do buttons on a baby project. Again we leave that to you to what works for you and uh, buttons are used in baby uh, garments as well. So that's something that is pretty standard. So there is the top of your ear and you're just gonna take your strand just pull it out and then use your darning needle. Let's get rid of our loose ends. You don't want any strands falling off of your bare ears while the child is wearing it. Again you the crocheter will see it before anybody but also the kid may um, want to be able to pull it out. Or should I be nicer and say child? <laughs> I forget sometimes I'm filming for the general public. Okay so there you go and good to go. And because of the, the one that you first started with you're gonna wanna take a darning needle and get rid of that and then do two of these and then you can sew it to your project and then add in your eyes and etc. So that's how you do your character sweaters. We hope that you enjoy and uh, this is another free tutorial available from yarnspirations.com. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.